Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own bench planter. And the tools you're going to require are chop saw. If you don't have a chop saw, a hand saw will be fine. Set square, cordless drills, tape measure and pencil, various size drill bit and screws, glue and a cork gun, a hammer, a sander, a spirit level. And if you do happen to have a compressor and a nail gun, it's going to be quicker. But don't worry if you haven't, you can get by with your hammer. But first off, I'm going to draw myself a sketch of what I'm about to build and work out some dimensions. So I'm going to start off by creating two cube boxes either side for the planters. This will be made out of a 2x2 frame. It'll be about 650 millimeters high and about 500 millimeters square. That'll be cladded with a tongue and groove hardwood and then capped off around the tops with mitered joints, which will look great. Then I'll bridge across the center of them with a frame of about probably just over a meter, 1.1 meter. That'll be built out of 3x2 and then again cladded on top with the hardwood, which once that's oiled, it'll look fantastic. So what I'm going to be doing is making the first cube. Now that will consist of four parts of a frame. These two are exactly the same size. They're made out of 2x2 tantalized timber. And of course they've got three noggins here holding them together at that width. Now then, I want to create a 500 millimeter square cube. So this particular one, a little bit wider than these, is, is 500 millimeters. But when they are fixed together here, and then this one fixed together here, and then the third one, which I'm about to make up now, fixed on here, that gives me my 500 millimeter square cube, which is what I'm after. So coming back to this one, I've just cut a kit of parts, 2b2 for the two corners and 2b2 for the top and bottom piece. I've got a larger piece in here, the 3b2, you might have noticed it in this one here. I'll explain about that later, why it's there. But first of all, I want to get this glued and screwed together. Now my width on these is 500 millimeters, bang on. So my cut here is 400 millimeters in this. And of course, these are 2b2, which are 50 mil wide on there. This is a, a strong polyurethane glue, so it'll expand and it'll dry extremely strong. Because remember, these are not only holding uh, all the soil in there with your plants and things either side of it, there is going to be a bench bridge in between them, which this frame has to hold up the weight of the bench and a couple of people sitting on top of that. So again, placing that in place, that in place, little bit of glue on these ends. And then if you happen to have any clamps, you could always clamp these together which makes life a little bit easier when you're screwing them. If not, of course, you know, you can just hold them and drive them in like this. Checking that we're nice and, nice and square, yeah. drive some uh, 90 millimeter screws right the way through my impact driver applying two in both all corners should I say Lovely. So now we have our frame and I mentioned about the 3B2, the thicker piece, which is going to be bridged across here. That's the top. And that's the mid top. So I'm going to 
can offer them into position and we can mark top and bottom of this timber. So there is our frame that we need. 500 millimeters wide, we've got the thicker 3B2 in the center. So now we have two of them the same and we have two of the smaller ones the same. Now these are 400 millimeters in width, so our bars in the middle here are 300, just in these are both 50 millimeters. So double check with your measurements or what size that you want. The next stage is now to do the same, glue, clamp them and screw these together. Now that's my two planter frames now made. The next stage is, is to construct the frame for the actual bench itself. So, one is gonna be down here, the other's gonna be a little bit further across there. Now I want my, my opening between these two to be around about 1300, which is up to here. So, I'm gonna build a frame at about 1290 so I'm going to cut myself down pieces of 3b2 which is these lengths cut these down at 1200 millimeters three of them to span across here and then an outer frame which holds all three of them together uh, that'll be 90 millimeters because these are actually 45 mil once they're uh, playing down a little bit like this so I can remove these down now out the way Now I've got the three of these at 1200. I'll space them apart a fraction like this. And then I want to cut two more pieces which will go on either end and hold them all together. Now bearing in mind my frame is 500 millimeters wide. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter, about 450. So once these are all cladded with the hardwood, and my bench meets up to it. The actual corners will step out a fraction, 25, 30 millimeters either end, and I think appearance-wise that will look better for me. I'm gonna drill some pilot holes in here so they don't split when we drive some large screws in them. However, I'm not gonna go in straight, I'm just gonna tilt it on an angle a fraction. Same again this one. Yeah. So now we have our bench mainframe built. What I'm going to do with this next is just put a couple of little noggins in here and here. That's all, because my lengths of hardwood are gonna be spanning this full length and fixed into here to take out any bounce. These center parts will take out any bounce, but by having a couple of little noggins in here, where some of the slats may not be sitting on there, they're gonna be caught on them noggins to take any bounce out of it. And it also stops the actual bent moving out this way by putting a couple of little noggins in. And that is my bench frame, now built super strong and super solid.
Now I've cut my cladding down to size, to length, I can start fixing it around the sides. What I have done for my very first strip is I've cut the groove off one end, so I've just got the tongue. And I'm gonna start on one edge here, of course. As you can see, this side, I've temporarily clamped a piece on here just to give me the depth of that. So my first one, I'm gonna start with my cut flush edge right on the end of here and then start to work my way across. Now what I will do is apply a little bit of glue on here first. One in the bottom and then one. Couple in the top. And then where my centre bar is here, I'm going to place a couple. Right in the centre there. And of course they're going to hold it in place until that glue actually dries on there. And then I can start to place them on like this. The groove itself, the tongue and groove, is holding it in place for me. And then just before I go around there, I'm just going to take my pencil and just do a little line, just where I want to try and keep all my nails. Very, very thin pencil mark across there because I'll be sanding it down once I've finished and then taking that pencil mark off altogether. Likewise with uh, the centre here. And then even along the bottom I'm going to do it. now come to my last piece on here so I'll slide that groove over the tongue pull it in and it's hanging over a little bit there and of course I don't want the tongue on the end of that so I'm going to come around take my pencil and just scribe a little line down the back of it is that now is going to get trimmed off which will give me a flat end and then that will allow me then to start with my new piece along here again which this edge will have been cut off so I'll have a nice square corner like the first one. Perfect, beautiful and flush on there. So that's one side now complete, only takes literally about a minute or two when you're using the air compressor and the nail gun. If you were using the hammers and nails panel pins on there, you're probably going to take about five or ten minutes each side, which isn't a long time of course. But that's one side complete, I've got three more on this cube and four more on the other cube. So that's my two planters now cladded right the way around all four sides and they're glued, pinned into place, they'll dry really solid. The next stage is I want to create a capping for the top of this to give it a little bit more of a waterproof finish on here and of course aesthetically make it look better. So again I've got some nice hardwood, this time it's a square edge one and I'm going to be cutting it at 45 here and what I'll do is I will place this along the top. All four corners will have 45 uh, degree cuts, so they'll meet nicely and go all the way around, just hanging over 
just a tiny little bit, a couple of millimeters just off the edge there. You don't want to have it flush, just step and proud a fraction. Now, if you are trying to pin these together, don't hold it with your fingers and start to try and pin it like that. Get it into position. And if you're happy with that position, place something else on top of it. And then, just get your one pin in for now. One quick check that you're happy with that before you commit to putting glue around the top rim. You are getting your little hangover. And then over to the opposite corner, double check it hasn't slid. So that's my two planters now completed. The caps are on, they've had a sanding down, they are finished off. Now I'm gonna turn my attention back to the frame I made earlier and start to clad the top of that. So the 3B2 seated frame I made earlier, I can now start to clad. The glue's dry, firmly screwed in position. I've got these reclaimed bed slats, but they're hardwood, they're really, really good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount these all the way across the top and also one across the front and one across the back. Okay, so now that they're all cut, I'm going to glue them and pin them into position. Okay, so that's my face cladded and also the back cladded. Now, placing these on, I'm going to want the first one to hang over just about five millimeters. Very like we did with the tops, the little lip on here. And the back one to hang over just a fraction, about here. And then, the rest of them are gonna be placed out with a small gap in between them just to allow the rain, of course, to fall through and not settle on them. And fix the first one on the front and then the back one. Now we have got a timber going right the way through the middle here of course, so if you just look where your screws are one end, which is right in the middle of this plank, and screws the other end right in the middle. So that's where I want to be firing my nails. And then of course we had the little noggins, and if you look through, you will see them. And again, allow you to get some pins in there. All add to the strength. So that is my bench now complete. All I need to do now is take out the three components, place them in the garden, clamp them together, glue them, screw them, a little bit of oil on it, and it's finished. So now the bench is resting in position now on my battens and on the clamps. I'm going to take again the long 100mm screws. Uh, eight millimeters wide 
and that thicker batten that we put on the inside here, of course the 3B2, I'm gonna drill a pilot hole in there and drive these screws right the way in to this timber inside this frame. Okay, so that is now four screws from the inside on both sides. Of course, you can get underneath in the frame and apply a couple more there as well, if you need to. Okay, so let's see. So that is the perfect height for me. Now we set it at 400, probably finishes about 420 with this top slat on top, but it's just absolutely perfect. All you need now is to oil this up, put some plants in it, and the sun to come out. So that's my bench planter now complete. If you're looking for more inspiration or how-to videos, check us out on social media and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. But if you wanna know more about the tools I've been using, check out the website, silverlinetools.com.